Hello, my name is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome you back to my channel. I hope everybody knows that I post videos related to data science, data analytics, machine learning and AI. And yet another time, I am coming here to showcase an end-to-end -end machine learning project. If you are new to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe the channel right now, like it and share this video with as much public as possible. This video is going to be on an end-to-end -end machine learning project. I am definitely going to take help from a Kaggle data source. But this project is being motivated by a research paper, which means this project can be used as your portfolio project and can be used as your research work as well. I am going to talk about the research paper in a while and how this idea got generated from a research paper to finding a suitable data set to use that data set to implement the research paper work and actually getting the results. So this video is going to be an end-to-end -end machine learning project and I, I will also guide you how you can also go through multiple other research papers and use that as your portfolio projects rather than working on that boring Kaggle data sets like Iris, Titanic and all those things. Let's make our life more fun by working on real-time research-oriented use cases. So see you after the intro. back I came across this research paper which talked about a novel approach to increase scalability while training machine learning algorithms using bfloat16 in credit card fraud detection. I got to know somehow that using some techniques we are able to increase the scalability. So that's the idea the initial idea that I got from the topic. But I was not aware of this concept called as bfloat16. What exactly is that? Even though I have worked for this industry for almost eight years, I was still new to a lot of concepts. And that's the beauty of data science. You keep on learning things every day. Every day is a new beginning. It's a new learning. I started exploring about bfloat16 and I found that bfloat16 is nothing but a floating point number format supported by some modern computer processors such as the TensorFlow processing unit TPU and NVIDIA Tensor Cores. It has a smaller bit width compared to traditional 32-bit floats, which can lead to faster computation times for machine learning models with a large number of parameters while still preserving reasonable accuracy. Using bfloat data can be beneficial for improving CPU utilization time as it allows for faster processing of floating point computations. Thereby, reducing the time taken to train machine learning models. Additionally, using bfloat can help reduce the memory footprint of the model, allowing for larger models to be trained on hardware with limited memory. So, using this idea, I started reading about this research paper because whenever you start working on a project, whenever you start working on a project based on a research paper, you always have to read through the research paper thoroughly and then don't forget to go through the references as well because this research paper has been used from multiple resources. Upon going through this research paper, the overall idea that I got was the researcher is basically using one of the credit card, def credit card fraud detection data sets to train it normally and to train it using the bfloat models that means he's converting the data into the bfloat format and then creating a model and he's comparing his raw model with the new model with the bfloat data and comparing the cpu utilization time so i started looking out for a data and finally i came across this data on kaggle which is online payments fraud detection data set this data set has a lot of columns including step, type, amount, name origin, old balance origin, new balance origin, name destination, old balance destination, is fraud and so on. Simply, it was a classification problem and I started working on this problem. So my main goal was to create a model using the raw data and create another model using the converted bfloat16 data 
and compare the accuracy and the CPU utilization time. And once we are done, we will again come back to this research paper and we will try to compare our results with their results and see whether it is actually doing a good job or not. In case you are willing to work on this particular project or similar kind of projects from various research papers, feel free to let me know in the comment section below so that I can give you some real time good ideas on how to choose the best research paper for your particular profile. Now it's time to get into the program. Let's get started. So for this exercise, we are using this online payments fraud detection data set. There are multiple features that we are going to use and this is the most important feature which is going to be used as your Y variable. And this data is hugely imbalanced. So definitely we will be balancing out the data. And of course, working on such kind of uh, data sets are really difficult. You cannot really finish your final model in one hour or in two hours or in three hours. It could take quite a good amount of time in building your end to end use case. But my main motive of this particular video is to compare the results from the original model with the new model with the B float data. So as this data set is huge, I will only be running the code into just one epoch and even one epoch takes around 30 minutes. So let's get started and I will just explain you the code. So we have imported all these libraries, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn, Warnings, uh, sklearn and TensorFlow. Those who are very much new to Python or very much new to, uh, you know, deep learning techniques or these kind of techniques. So I would recommend them to go ahead and do some basic, have some basic understanding on machine learning before getting into this topic, because there will be multiple things, multiple topics that you might not be able to understand. So I have read this file. This is how the data head looks like. And I'm not rerunning the file because it takes a lot of time to process and run these codes. If you look at the information, you can see these are multiple columns that we have and these are the data types that we have. df.describe is basically giving you the description. I'm not at all concerned about the EDA part. However, your goal will also be to work on the EDA and then the modeling part. Dataframe.isNull.sum is returning me zero, which means there are no null values. So here I'm renaming some of the columns for convenience. And these are some of the features with numerical values. Here in this piece of code, I'm just plotting all the numerical features for distribution check. And this is how my graph looks like. We have transaction amount, sender balance, transaction hours, and so on. Dot core is giving me the correlation between multiple features. Now, if you need an end-to-end understanding on what's happening and what are the different steps of EDA, I will definitely recommend you to go ahead and watch out my EDA videos. I already have three to four dedicated EDA videos that goes on for almost two to three hours. Watch out and then come back here if you are very much new to these kind of concepts. So my final Y variable value counts is huge. 99.9% .9 from class zero and only 0.1% from class one. That's huge, right? Hugely imbalanced data set. Now, as we all know, in hugely imbalanced data sets, accuracy is cursed. So in order to use accuracy, you always need to balance out the data. So this is where I'm dividing the data into zeros and ones, non-fraud and fraud. And I'm going to drop some of the irrelevant columns. And here I'm performing label encoding. Well, it's a debate. Label encoding is usually not used for X variables. You can go ahead and do one hot encoding. but Again, as I told you, our exercise is not whether to understand which encoding techniques are best. Our just exercise is going to be compare the final models, the non B float model and the B float model. So I'm kind of dividing the data frame into dependent and independent. I'm basically converting the data into X and Y, and then I'm dividing it here into testing and training data. So here I'm performing standard scalar, which is a feature scaling technique. 
and here I'm converting the data to NumPy. Why to NumPy? Because we are going to use CNN models and CNN models will be expecting NumPy array, right? And here I'm reshaping to give one more new dimension to the data. So right now here I'm just reshaping it as per the NumPy things. Here I will be counting the values before oversampling and this is where I'm performing the oversampling, the smart oversampling. And after this, you can see I'm comparing before oversampling how much records did we had and after oversampling how much records did we have. And you can see now we have balanced out data. So always remember to balance out data on the training data, not on the testing data. So first from the raw data, divide it into training and testing and only on the training data, do the upsampling or downsampling, whatever you want to do. So this is where I'm calling my TensorFlow libraries, importing my sequential models, calling some convolutional models, batch normalization and dropout. In case again you are new to CNN, I already have a 3 and 3.5 hours of dedicated video only on convolutional neural networks. Please go ahead and watch out that. Model at summary and these many parameters, very less parameters are being used without pre-trained models. Here I'm compiling the model as this is a binary classification problem. We are using binary cross entropy. As I told you, this model took me a lot of time. I initially started with 10 epochs, but I had to switch to one epoch. So just one epoch took around 35 minutes, 47 seconds. So you can imagine 10 epochs will take around 350 minutes, which is more than almost six hours, right? So these kind of activities you can do, but I am only going to compare based on one epoch. And trust me, this is not the right comparison. With one epoch, uh, the results could be misleading, but you should just practice or try it out with higher number of epochs, okay? So I have done this. I have serialized the model to JSON and saved the weights. And this is where I'm converting the data into bfloat. Again, same piece of code models. I'm just changing the model name to model two. This is where I'm converting the model weights to bfloat 16 data type. So I'm converting the policies of my TensorFlow Keras mixed precision to mixed bfloat 16 and setting the global policy here. And this is where I'm converting my training data and testing data to bfloat object. You can see tensorflow.convert to tensor and I'm passing the training data. Data type is tf.bfloat16. And this is the, this is basically doing the magic. And once you compile and then run it, you can see I ran it on first one epoch and I was able to get 36 minutes, 6 seconds. So definitely my bfloat technique took more time. but I will also tell you one more thing that I also tried this with another use case related to credit cards. Now, the credit cards use case will actually give you better results because I will show you that without the Bflow technique, 15 epochs took me 5 minutes and 30 seconds, but with Bflow, it took me 5 minutes and 19 seconds. So 11 seconds is a huge time as compared to this kind of CPU time. And you can imagine when you are working on models where you are implementing hyperparameter optimization, you are implementing hundreds and two hundreds of epochs, definitely the Bflow technique will be a better approach. So try to take this research work to the next level, work on these codes. I will be leaving you the fraud detection data set the credit card related data set so basically two use cases where i have compared this with that and that's all about this particular use case so that's all about this particular project and this particular video i hope it was informative i hope it was able to help you and i hope it will also motivate you to work on your portfolio projects rather than working on those boring kaggle projects pick a research paper which is near to your interest interest areas and start working on it obviously 
implementing a research paper might be a difficult task might be a challenging task in case you feel you need my help let me know in the comment section below or else reach out to me on whatsapp or linkedin i'll try to see wherever and whenever possible i will try to help you out that's all about this particular video the code will be in the description below but please go ahead and don't forget to subscribe this channel and recommend this video to as much people as possible and let me know also what should be my next video about that's all about this particular video see you till the next time